welcome to this tutorial uh, showing the workflow that I've been using to create the high contrast gritty black and white photos uh, that I've been using in my Urban Ugliness series. I've been asked to do this by fellow members of the studioonline.co.uk and panoramio.com. What you're going to see in this tutorial is how I create three exposures from one raw file. Three TIFF files are the output from this first uh, step. And then, using those three TIFF files, I pull them into Dynamic Photo HDR, where they're combined into one high dynamic range image. And this is then tone mapped to create one JPEG output file. That JPEG output file is then pulled into Photoshop where the black and white conversion takes place. So without further ado, let's uh, go about creating the three separate exposures, the three different TIFF files. Just draw your attention to some of the um, qualities of this particular image. Have a look in this area, in the sky area, and you'll see that um, I don't have a huge range of tones showing there. It's rather overexposed. The shadow areas, they're not too bad, but again, I don't have a, I'm not seeing a huge range of uh, tones there. The middle is not too bad. Okay, what am I going to do to uh, adjust these? Well, I'm going to be using the exposure compensation to, to create three different exposures. Before I continue, um, it's just um, a feature of the um, this particular video, the screen size, the dimensions being used, that unfortunately we can't see the, uh, the histogram down here. If I flick over to the Batch Convert tab, we actually do see the histogram. Uh, I was saying about the um, overexposed sky area, well we can see in the histogram everything's bunched up towards the right there. And if we look in the shadow area, um, it's not too bad, but um, uh, again, there's a bit of bunching going on down at the left-hand side. Okay, uh, back to the uh, the correct tab, and for this first um, range of settings, all I'm going to do is change the exposure compensation to bring up uh, the, um, the the detail in the in the sky. Now I know from preparing to do this video that I really need to be working uh, down at the um, uh, minus 1.75 to get the sky detail about right. So let's just slowly bring that down. Minus 1.567 and I'll do the last little bit by hand. 0.75. Now you'll see that um, there we have uh, a lot of nice uh, range of tones in the sky. I'll flick around to the Batch Convert tab, we see in the histogram that now I have no bunching towards the right-hand side. OK, I have for the left-hand side, but uh, that'll be sorted out in the, um, uh, the combination of the, the three different exposures. OK, so that's, um, that's the first exposure set. So I click here so that I can make a, a different set of um, um, range of settings. So, OK. I know that I just need to set it back to zero to get the mid-range about right. And again, I'll do the last little bit by hand. Um, f and that gives a, a fine range of tones in the uh, in the middle, in the mid-range. And then take another snapshot, and we'll set the exposure now for the uh, for the shadow areas. And once again, I know from looking at this previously that it's plus one point five. Um, I'm sorry, plus 1.75 brings out the uh, the shadow details that I'm after. So 1.73, and again the last little bit by hand, and round to the batch convert tab, so you can see that in the histogram, I've pulled out the um, the left hand side by by increasing exposure there, so that I've got a fine range of tones in the shadow areas. So that's my three um, different uh, uh, exposures set, and now I just have to create the output files. And I do that by clicking here, and you see in the batch convert that the first one's being 
converted, second one, and then the third one. And once that's uh, once that's completed, that's the first um, step uh, out of the way. So what you'll see in the uh, the next section is these three TIFF files being pulled and combined using Dynamic Photo HDR. Okay, this is the second step in the workflow, and in this step we bring in the three different exposures from the one RAW file, those three TIFFs that were created earlier, uh, combine them into a one high dynamic range image. It gets tone mapped and the resulting JPEG is then further processed in Photoshop. So let's uh, first of all tell it create a new high dynamic range image made up of those three TIFF files. Now I know from uh, previous experience that I need to select these in reverse order just so that it comes out logically in the, uh, in the next step. Here we are. Now clicking the Guess EV button should bring up the exposure uh, values that I used uh, but you can see they're different so I'll set those properly by hand. Uh, in the first it was minus 1.75, the second was 0 and the third was plus 1.75. So I'll do that by hand. Uh, we don't need to align the files in the next step as they all came from one raw file. If you'd been creating uh, from, uh, from actually three separate raw files or more then you would want to align them in the next step. Okay. Now we'll just wait for it to um, uh, create the HDR image and uh, in a moment you'll see um, at this, uh, at this uh, size of video you won't see a huge amount but um, that's the limitations of recording in this way. Okay so the preview shows us uh, the, um, the full image and we just click in there we can see okay we've got a nice range of tones in the sky um, doesn't show up too well here but when it's tone mapped in a little while you will really see that. Okay so click on the tone map button. Okay you're not seeing the whole thing here so I'll just move it across so you can see the right hand side and move it back again because we're going to now manipulate these sliders and choose a, a method. By default it comes up as eye-catching but for my workflow I've been working with ultra contrast and you can immediately see the sorts of effects that's having on the sky and in the texture of the brickwork. Now I'm going to um, first of all natural saturated pretty much I, I leave that alone for this workflow there's one end of the scale and there's the other. As I say I tend to leave that alone in this um, uh, in this workflow. Vivid colors, well what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to set the vivid colors so that I get the sorts of um, contrast that I'm after for the various parts of the image. Now you see even with a halfway setting that the blue is starting to uh, blow out, that is I'm not getting uh, uh, the range of tones that, are, um, that will give the final end result that I'm after. You see that the, the yellows are starting to go as well. So I'll just drop that back so that um, in the mono conversion later I've got a fine range of tones but I've also got good contrast between the, uh, uh, the colors and that looks to me about right. Let's try it a little bit lower. Mm, well maybe around about there and I was looking specifically at the blues, the yellows here and also in the uh, uh, the mosses on the roof. That's about fine. Now the, um, the the contrast areas set by dramatic light radius. I'll, to show you the um, possibilities, that's at one end of the scale that's at the other end of the scale and what I'm doing is I'm looking again for the, the textures and the tones um, in the brickwork and in the sky to, to give the, if you like, the drama that I'm after. And I'll just um, manipulate this to get uh, what I'm after. And that's looking quite good. And I think I, I like that.
like that. Yes, we'll leave it there. OK, and then the strength of the dramatic light. Well, again, at one end of the scale, at the other end of the scale. And I think that's just uh, that's too much. That's, um, that's pushing it just too hard. Um, I'm beginning to get back some tones. And I think around about there. I'm not too worried whether it looks good in colour, because of course it's going to be converted to, to black and white. Finally, the surface smoothness. Again, one end of the scale, other end of the scale, and let's manipulate it to get um, again the effect that I'm after. I think around about there. OK, so I've finished faffing about with the sliders now and I'm ready now to actually go ahead and process that. Now you, you can't see the process button so let's move this over so that you can and let's just click on process. Give it a, um, a name and uh, in good old tradition I'll just call it test. And here we are, it's all being processed and once that's completed that JPEG output file will be pulled into Photoshop in the next step. OK, so that's all for Dynamic Photo HDR.